Hi guys, let's have a look at how to merge two images together using a transparent gradient and using Affinity Photo version 2.1 on the iPad in this case, although it works equally well on the desktop, PC or Mac, which I can do for you too later on if you like. Affinity Photo version 2.1, the latest one out. Now merging two images with a transparent gradient is very similar to a double exposure. So it's the same type of thing. Now to begin, create a new image base and we're going to do this by creating a new project. So select new document and select the default in the photo section number 4R, which is a 6x4 inch landscape template. Now that's your standard photograph size in landscape mode. This is a standard photo size and it's easy to work with. Tap OK to create because you don't need to change anything. It's all there and it's a template. So just click OK and there you are. Now the image comes up quite large on an iPad. So pinch it in so you can see it all. Let's put a finger and a thumb on the screen and just squeeze them together as if you're going to um, reduce the size of something. And that's exactly what it'll do. You can see the blue dots. That's where my finger or... Uh, my Apple Pencil is positioned. Now we need to load the first image. And for this exercise, we're just going to use the Stock Studio. So I'm just going to use a desert image from the Stock Studio. Next, we will resize the image to be the same size as the template. Now that's what you want. We're going to resize it down to 6x4. Before you do this though, it's important to select the anchor point at the bottom of the Transform Studio and select the dot in the centre. Now you can see the Transform Studio there and you can see the anchor point. It's the square with all the dots around it and a white square dot in the middle. Now set the lock between the width and the height to on. Now just up a little bit there, you'll see there's a chain between width and height numbers. You want to set that to on because you want the image to draw in in direct proportion. Otherwise, you'll have a skewed image. Now, carefully draw down your pencil on the or up or down across the width setting to set the image size so it's a near fit to the canvas. By just dragging it up and down, it will change the numbers in the width or the height. Or if you like, you can set them too six inches and it should change the other one to four if it doesn't click the chain so it unlinks it set one to six and one to four then with your little magnet up the top right hand corner set that to on and then you can drag your image so you have the green vertical line and the red horizontal line meeting and that means your image is dead center if you've got any adjustments to make just make them at this point. Some images don't fit neatly. Now, reduce the whole canvas in size so you can clearly see the boundaries. Again, that's just pinching the whole thing in carefully. If you make a mistake, just press the bottom left arrow and it will undo what you did or redo is the bottom right arrow. Now, so now we can locate our second image. Let's just use the Stock Studio again, this time finding a suitable image to merge with our first image. And this time I've selected a mosque. We had a desert in the first image, very, um, very evocative of uh, the Arabian Peninsula perhaps. And we'll reduce this image the same way as we did with the other one. Make sure the lock is on, set it to 6x4 and make sure your dot is in the middle. If you don't, it will centre off the page somewhere and you'll have to go find it. Makes life very difficult. Then set the anchor point to centre in the Transform Studio and reduce the size by locking and adjusting the height and width, which is what I just said. And again, you can see there, I've got it set to six inches by four inches. That's the standard size. Now, fortunately, a couple of these photographs are in 
Their aspect ratio is in direct proportion, so they reduced to 6 by 4. Some will, some won't. I was just lucky with these two. Now, let's check the layers for confirmation. Now, I've highlighted both layers there. You can see I've got them both selected, but you don't really need them both selected. Now, they're both images, and they're both just sitting there nicely. That's what we want. One on top of the other. Now, select the top image. Now, we're going to set the transparency of this top layer. Select the fill tool. That's that bucket on its side, not the one with the paint coming out of it, but the one that the arrow is pointing to. Bucket on its side with a line through it. I know it's an odd name for this tool, but that's what we need. It's called the fill tool. Don't ask me why, because it's actually a gradient. And you can see I've got all the names in highlight there of the various tools. And you can see it's called the fill tool. When you select the fill tool, make sure to start with the defaults. The context toolbar will also appear and you then need to set the type to linear. There's my clock dinging in the background on the hour. Wasn't that fortunate? Now you can see in the context toolbar, the fill tool is set to none. That means there's nothing selected at the moment. And I've got the red arrow pointing at the fill tool there still, so you can see it. And you think, mm-hmm, nothing's happening. But we need to set that type from none to linear. And there it is. Set the type to linear. The image will turn grey and a line will appear across it. Perfect. And you think, no, oh, that's not quite what I want. But we continue on. Select the left control dot, at the very left. Then go to the colour wheel tool and set the opacity to zero. And you can see there I've got the colour wheel and just below it, opacity, zero. You can see the lower image is now showing clearly through. But we still have that grey colour, which is not really all that nice. We'll change that, shall we? We shall. To start with, go to the layers and deselect the faded layer. You just deselect it so it doesn't show at all. Next, select the colour picker eyedropper. And in the desert picture, pick an appropriate colour. Well, I'm going for the colour of the sand dunes. Now you can see I've dragged the colour picker across to the left there. That's where that blue circle's appearing. And there's a black outline circle with a dot in the middle just above it. That's the colour picker. And you can see just beside the eyedropper, because I've selected that, it's changed that dot to the sandy colour. But do not apply it. Not yet. Just leave it selected. That's all we want at this stage. So you just go and select that colour. Now we can get creative. Enable the transparent layer again. So go back to your layers and enable the layer. Make sure both layers are enabled. Got the little tick boxes on, okay? And select it. Make sure that layer is selected. Select the right side control dot. That's the dot over the right hand side. Now tap the colour picker control dot. That's that little dot that's changed the colour there. The default grey will now change to the selected colour more in keeping with the other image. So the colour balance of both images is much the same. That's not complex really. Enable the transparent layer, select the right side control dot, tap the colour picker control dot. And the default grey will change to the selected colour. Notice the control position is still halfway. That's its default of course. And we can alter that because we don't want that entire image showing behind there. I just want the right hand side of that image. So move that control dot to the right a little and you'll see the image fade even more from the left towards the centre. Now I've moved it to the right just a little further there. In fact, it's up to you at this point how you set the transparency. You might even experiment with radial or any of the other types in the mode of that, um, that gradient fill. So, I urge you to experiment. Thanks for watching.
I hope you've gained some ideas and insights for creating your own work in Affinity Photo. Please share the video with friends if you like the idea. I'm sure they will appreciate it. And don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate that. Keeps the good work coming.